Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dead Men Walking Podcast. Thanks for coming along on the ride. We appreciate you listening, sharing with a friend, and bringing glory to God. Uh, first and foremost, we just want to say that this episode is brought to you by Jacob Supply. He's a brother in the Lord. He's reformed as well, so you know his business is good stuff. Right here in Temperance, Michigan, it's local, but listen, if you're listening in Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, it's worth the drive. He brings you quality building products at wholesale pricing. He does all the buyouts. He's got appliances and roofing and decking and all that good stuff. So if you're doing a project, make sure you go see Jacob at Jacob Supply or just jump on jacobsupply.com. Check them out on their website. Cool. Now that we got the business out of the way, guys, welcome back to another episode. We have a good one for you here. This one's special. Now, I know I say that every episode, but this one's really special because about six or seven years ago, I got obsessed with the podcast, okay? And uh, if you guys uh, know me, you know that I was an early adopter of podcasts, 10, 11, 12 years ago. Absolutely love them. And this gentleman, uh, he was a host of a podcast called Reformed Pubcast. Uh, and then since then has become a filmmaker. Uh, he does all kinds of uh, great stuff. Uh, film called Calvinism. I think we have one come out called uh, Cessationism, which we're going to or Cessationist, which we're going to be talking about. We have Mr. Les Lamphere on the podcast. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. Thank you for being here. Why don't you give our guests a couple minute introduction of yourself? Tell them a little bit, a little bit about you and uh, what you got going on. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, I'm just some dude. I, uh, grew up in Pennsylvania. I, uh, was a ter terrible student and I never went to college or anything like that. And then the Lord saved me when I was like 19, he moved me down to Florida, um, through some really cool circumstances. And then, um, I ended up in a, like a weird situation where the this the uh some millionaire just built a visual effects studio in port st Lucie, florida of all places just this out of nowhere thing that happened and then uh he trained a bunch of people in the city locals uh how to do like post-production on on hollywood movies so i started working in in uh in movies and um i was becoming reformed all around that same time um, shortly after doing that, you know, some of that work for a while, I uh, started a podcast with my friend. We drank beer and talked about theology, and it was the height of the the craft beer boom, and also yeah. sort of the the height of the uh, young, restless, reformed Calvinism resurgence boom. And those two things sort of meshed very well, and uh, we got a big following, and, and uh, it was a lot of fun. And I so at some point, I sort of tried to roll all of those interests and passions and gifts, if you will, together and uh, ask people if they wanted to see a movie about Calvinism and did some fundraising for it. And so ever since then, I've been making uh, theological documentaries that are sort of the whole purpose is to sort of bring it down to a very understandable level with fun animation and, uh, you know, sort of intriguing stories. That's kind of the, the idea, make it digestible theological, God glorifying. And uh, that's, that's what I like to do. Oh, that's awesome, man. And we're going to get into some of those films here in a minute, but would you mind sticking around and maybe giving some input on our newsy news segment where we go over three um, news stories from, from this week? What do you think? Of course. Let's do it. Oh, yeah, we do have some news. Well, we can't <laughs> not talk about uh, one of the bigger decisions uh, that happened just a few days ago, the overturning of Roe v. Wade, the Dobson versus Jackson um, decision, eliminating, and this is what... One of, uh, it, oh, go ahead. The, the, the best decision that's ever been made in American history. Okay, there you go. And I was going to say what the left is saying, eliminating the constitutional right to an abortion, which uh, that's a whole nother, nother subject when we talk about a constitutional right to murder. Um, it did not law abortion, though, but merely gave the opinion that states have the right to ban, legalize, or regulate abortion. Uh, what are your thoughts besides uh, the thought you just gave being the greatest decision in the U.S. history? What are your thoughts on the uh, Roe v. Wade overturning, Les? It's just, I mean, it's, it's morally the only, the only right choice. It's, um, as far as the constitution goes, uh, just, uh, as politically, it, it's the only choice that makes sense. This should have never happened in the first place. 
Mm. So I say it's the best decision uh, in American history because it's the most obvious, the most clear, and it's it, it literally is a nation, at least in the, in the sense of the courts, um, repenting of the most wicked uh, decision that's ever been that's ever been made in American history, at least. Um, and sure. it, we, we just did away with it. Now, abortion isn't solved or anything. This is a, you know, a lot more work that needs to be done. And um, people are still doing evil, evil things in this land and soaking it with blood. But uh, this was the right choice. And it opens up the possibility of actually, my goodness, allowing states to not let people murder their own children. Yeah. No, absolutely. I would say, uh, you know, I've been accused of being uh, uh, cynical. I say I'm a realist, but I would have loved to see the court rule that states do not have the right to regulate the murder of preborn at all. Um, you know, if, if, the, if the Supreme Court came back and said, well, we're going to give the, the uh, rights to the states to regulate uh, the execution of any minority group they want or any Christian group or any sect of people, we would all be outraged. Uh, but instead, we are celebrating a decision that says, oh, well, uh, we'll give the states the rights to decide if they want to murder children. Uh, I take a little harder stance on it. I would like to see the day in America where the general welfare clause of the Constitution is actually upheld by our Supreme Court and says, no, you can't murder a life in the womb at all, a complete abolition yeah. of abortion. But I think this is a step in the right direction. I think this is a lot of hard work by a lot of those in that um, I don't want to say industry, but in, in that in that area or space of pro-life and even abolition, which I know a lot on both sides of that fence. But I think it's I think it's good news. And I and I and I always have said that we are going to look back on that 50 year span in our history and just hang our heads in shame of what we were promoting and allowing and legalizing. Um, let's go on to the second story, though. Uh, this one, uh, you know, so we'll stay with the heavy stuff here. Um, I picked this up off a of Breitbart, not normally a place where I go for news, but just happened to, just happened to uh, catch my attention. It says, children watch nude cyclists at Boy Scout-led Seattle Pride Parade. Children younger than 10 watch fully nude bikers at the <laughs> Seattle Pride Parade. I laugh because it's just so ridiculous, which is kicked off by the Boy Scouts of America. Though it's not clear what group the nude cyclists were representing, their purpose appeared to address body image with one sign that read challenge body shame, build self-esteem. Both men and women were nude. The parade reportedly began with the Boy Scouts of America leading the proceedings as they carried both pride flags and American flags. Pro-abortion protesters challenging the recent Supreme Court ruling overturning Roe v. Wade were also enthusiastically received. Activists, uh, workers with Amazon also marched in the parade and challenged the company to remove transphobic books from its platform. And then, of course, it uh, finishes up here and says Seattle police officers were reportedly barred from marching in the parade. So uh, I saw a video clip of this and I, I'm, I'm thinking about posting it. I don't know if I should. Maybe I'll just give the link and you and, and listeners and viewers can watch at their own, uh, you know, kind of discretion. And it shows these young kids all under 10, eight, nine, you know, seven, six. And they're so the confused look on their faces as they watch these fully uh, nude adult men and women riding by on their bikes with everything exposed and your heart just breaks and goes, not only is this something that's being pushed, but being pushed by once a Christian founded organization like the Boy Scouts. Um, I mean, where do we go from here? After we see Roe v. Wade overturned, we're probably going to get some challenges on some trans right and and um, same sex marriage right stuff too in the Supreme Court in the next year or two. Is this a turning point? Are we going to see more of this kind of stuff, or do you think less of this kind of stuff? What do you think, Les? I mean, yeah. So, like, I, I didn't even hear about this story, but it's not you know none of this stuff is even surprising at this point. They're clearly just they they just want blatant sexuality just shoved down the throat of children and you know there's nothing you're supposed to be able to even say about it uh yeah i don't know man it's it's you know with with 2020 as far as i was concerned it's like very clear the lord has given us over we are just completely under judgment and the overturning of roe v wade was such a surprise uh to me like in the midst of all of this this like the wild seeming yeah. attempt at repentance on some level was so it's so beautiful it's you know it's, it's such a good attempt at doing the right thing um but it it's i don't know if the lord if the lord decides to be gracious um i will be amazed at his grace but i'm still uh, you know i don't know the whole uh, eschatology thing 
I'm very pe pessimistic about the near future. Okay. I don't see I don't see America uh, going in a good direction just just from you know what what we're observing. You, you know you might get these little moments. You know, maybe we'll get a really good conservative president, uh, you know, whatever, as a reactionary thing. But that's all, you know, that's all based on the economy, it seems. We need a nation, the nation to repent truly, um, yeah. morally, not just based on, you know, Joe Biden ruined the economy, so we're going to elect a Republican or whatever. Absolutely. Like, so, you know, is that going to happen? Is the Lord going to pour out... Uh, his spirit and bring about repentance in America, that would be a beautiful thing. Um, but if not, when I look around, it just, it just seems yeah. like this is the direction we're going in and we're not getting a whole lot of pushback. Yeah. So let's take a four hour conversation and reduce it to one question. What is your eschatology? Where do you lean? <laughs> I'm a millennial. A millennial. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so J Jason and I always go back and forth. He he's he's post mill. I'm optimistic. Ah mill. I think uh, that's pretty close though. But um, okay, so and that's a yeah. whole nother that's a whole nother episode uh, that <laughs> the people don't want to hear about that either yeah. because we've talked about it. Let's finish up with our last story. This is more of a fun one. Uh, Top Gun Maverick continues to soar, just past one billion dollars. And here's the caveat, guys: uh, without China. China banned the movie. Usually it's 25 to 30% of worldwide box office. The uh, all-male toxic masculinity, testosterone-filled film, uh, made a billion dollars worldwide without China. Uh, is Are we going to, and we keep seeing this, Jurassic Park, anything with a strong male lead seems to do very well in entertainment. Are we going to see uh, the toxic max masculinity stuff kind of go to the wayside or... Uh, I mean, usually Hollywood follows the money. Are we going to keep seeing these strong male leads um, that uh, I would say are more biblically aligned than some of the other stuff we've been seeing? I don't know. Top Gun uh, Maverick kind of has proven that wrong again to where they did a billion dollars, um, you know, without China. What do you think? Yeah, at the risk of completely contradicting what I just said. Uh, <laughs> I, I, That's okay. You, you can do are that you here. Familiar are you familiar with uh, the dead internet theory? No, I'm not. Please explain. You never heard of that? Yeah. So uh, there's this this whole idea that um, so you know the whole thing with Elon Musk is going on right now with Twitter, and mm. uh, Twitter's supposed to be revealing how many bots are make up the you know the, sure. the users on Twitter, and all this weird stuff started happening as soon as Elon was like got his foot in the door. All these conservatives got millions of followers back, and all these Democrats, like Joe, like half of Joe Biden's followers on Twitter, forty-eight percent of Joe Biden's was fake. Yeah, insane. So, so, and then they're not revealing the actual numbers of bots. Uh, they just, they just won't release the information. So it's this giant question mark: Is Elon Musk about to like unveil that like all of Twitter is just bots? Um, <laughs> so there's this whole idea. There's this theory that goes along with that called the dead internet theory. So I guess it's like in 2014 or somewhere around there, um, that's when the crackdown started happening on uh, all conservatives and like the voices. And they just started controlling the entire narrative that is the internet in general. Mm. And it just became all bots. So the internet died. And so the, the idea is nobody, no human beings actually believe the nonsense, very few at least, uh, and definitely the paid uh, activists that are sure. going to these marches sure. and stuff. Uh, so it's all a charade. The internet doesn't actually feel the way that we're told they do. We're actually mostly sane, more at least more conservative uh, people. So what we want to see is movies like Top Gun, Maverick, and what we don't want to see is girls making out in uh, right. Toy Story movies. Right. Yeah. See, optimistic Amil. I'm telling yeah. you, the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you might have contradicted a little bit, but you're yeah. absolutely right. Because here's the thing, uh, even within like, um, like stand up comedy and things like that, you talk to comics and they go outraged who the seven people on Twitter, like it seems like the minority of the view uh, people who get out and talk to a lot of people. I'm a real estate broker. I'm also an elected official. I talk to tens of thousands of people a year across eight or nine counties in my state. Uh, generally, you know, when I say generally, 51% or more are, are not on board with this far left kind of woke, and, and they don't even have to be believers. They just go, what? This is insane. 
And I would tend to believe something like I could see uh, certain tech companies or elites or whatever controlling uh, a narrative digitally. They've done it in print, right? right? We've seen them do it in print media. So why not do it in digital media? Very interesting theory. Uh, I knew I knew uh, having you on would always turn to something interesting. So we got introduced to a new dead internet theory. (laughs) Guys, go look it up and tell us what you think. All right, so that's all the news we got. Let's get in to the show. And that was the Newsy News. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about your new film, Les, uh, Sensationalist. Uh, I want to know, like, where did this idea came from? Uh, why you felt it was the right time to uh, make it? Uh, g- give us your uh, input on this. So really, I'm the, the new kid on the block for this particular project so i like i said i i made i started making films i made a movie called calvinist uh mm-hmm. and then a few years later i made a movie called uh spirit and truth and so that was respectively one was explaining calvinism and the resurgence of calvinism and then i made a movie about uh reformed worship so specifically like why is smoke machines and big bands and like all this insane stuff in in worship a, a bad thing uh, yeah. kind of defending the uh, what you call reformed worship historically. So these are passions that I have. Um, and I was kind of getting the itch to make another movie. And uh, these two, uh, my my partners now, David and Tim, they, they came up with an idea to make a movie about cessationism, which if your audience doesn't know, basically just means that uh, the gifts in the New Testament, like speaking in tongues and raising people from the dead and like healing people just as, as an office, like I can just go around and do these things whenever I want sort of thing. Uh, that idea has, has ceased uh, because they served a purpose and a time and that time and that purpose has ended. Mm. Uh, so that's the idea. Uh, and I am a cessationist, but mm. they were very passionate about this thing. They shot some footage of it. They put together a trailer. They were asking me if I would maybe help with it. And uh, once I started to look at the project, I recut the trailer just to make it a little more poppy and punchy and interesting. And then I was like, hey, let's just make this together. Like, I, I, I am a cessationist. I'm, I, I, I love the content. Uh, I think it's going to be good. So uh, the three of us now are partnered up and making it uh, pending it getting funded. So it's on Kickstarter right now. It's uh, very close to getting funded, 94% or something like that funded. So by the time this comes out, it might already be funded, but, uh, you know, the more money we get, the better the movie's going to be, the more travel we can do and all that stuff. And you'll also get t-shirts and, um, you know, coffee mugs or whatever you want, pre-order the movie, all that stuff. So uh, if you're interested in this, please go over, check out the Kickstarter. The movie's called Cessationist, and you can uh, you can help support it if you'd like to. Yep, and we'll make sure we link that up on uh, our RSS feed when we send out everything to all the pod chasers and podcast listeners and all that. Uh, so is this Sweet. is this going to be a movie that just explains kind of one side of a view? Is it going to be explanatory at all? Is it just going to be, well, there's two views and this is why? Is there going to be biblical rep? Like, what are you trying to accomplish with this? And if I'm a listener right now and I go, yeah, I want to invest in this film and I, and I want to see it, what can I expect in the film that I'm going to get? Yeah, so my philosophy, and it sounds like the, the guys that I'm partnering with, they, they kind of feel the same way. Um, as far as what I want to do in my movies is make a positive case for a doctrinal position. I don't want to leave anybody at the end of it, like sort of like, eh, I don't know which way. Um, so, you know, I, we be, I believe that cessationism is true. Uh, I believe it's biblical. I believe that uh, going against it is actually dangerous for a lot of reasons. Um, so the purpose of the movie is to kind of show one, some of the crazy stuff that's going on out there. Um, I think, uh, but I think people are also pretty familiar with it cause it's pretty, uh, like pop culture, mainstream, uh, mainstream yeah. sort of, yeah, it, re- it really is. Um, and so we want to expose that, but we also want to interact with, you know, the best arguments. Cause there are, there are Christians, like I've gone to really solid seeming churches and everything seems on the up and up and you know going along fine and then all of a sudden somebody will start speaking in tongues some special message from the lord and somebody else interprets it and i'm like what the heck is this like like so there are like seemingly sane people 
that that believe this stuff and you know we want to be respectful to the john pipers and the wayne grudems of the world and uh make sure that we're not just attacking the low-hanging fruit but actually interacting with you know it like is there a clear way to understand this and come to a conclusion about about these things very very interesting okay so let me let me see if i can ask you a few questions maybe give you some uh maybe some examples so what about someone who might say, you know, uh, do you feel that there's a difference between uh, a, a signs and wonders and uh, an, an actual healing that we can't explain, let's say, uh, a documented healing where, you know, someone prayed or, or, or they prayed for themselves or someone prayed for them and there was an instant of, of a healing that otherwise could be unexplained. Are you saying from your position or the movie's position that they're saying that no longer happens? Does God still heal today? Or is signs and wonders and miracles different? Or do we lump those in the same group? I know I got a couple of questions there for you, but maybe you can pick that apart yeah. and tell us what you think. Yeah. So uh, a couple of uh, issues that go along with that is like most of when we see that, um, it's, it's sort of just somebody coming and either telling you that that happened or, or you get these like crazy revival situations where people are, you know, there's plants in the audience and there's some guy in a wheelchair and you go over and uh, pray for him. And, you know, you're, you're showing off the power of this one individual preacher or whatever. So yeah, problem one is that so much of this stuff is just fake. Um, pr like pretty clearly fake. If you have any sense at all, and you're actually paying attention to what's going on. Um, these people are proven to be charlatans all the time. Um, but one of the misunderstandings about cessationism is that we're saying that God can't perform miracles anymore. And that's definitely not true. God can absolutely heal somebody instantaneously if he wants to. God could, speaking in tongues, that whole issue is supernaturally speaking a language that you yourself don't understand. Actual languages spoken by people that don't speak those languages uh, naturally. So it's a supernatural uh, sudden ability to speak a different language. So God could still do something like that. You know, if I find myself in some crazy country for some reason, and I can, and God gives me the ability to preach the gospel, you know, sure. All these things are still possible because God can do literally anything he wants to do. So right. we're, we're talking uh, specifically about uh, the gifts that were given for the purpose of apostolic, um, uh, uh, demonstrating their authority. Sure. Uh, so, so that the time of the apostles has ended and those miracles had a purpose at the time. And it was to validate the fact that these are actually apostles from Christ who are, uh, even writing new scripture. That's huge. Like, you know, if, if you're going to come along and start preaching a message and you're going to say it's from God, you, you, God needs to validate that that's true or else it's like, well, anybody could say that. So he gave them certain power. He did the same thing with Christ himself. Jesus was performing miracles to validate that he was truly from God and he was speaking God's truth uh, in, in a way that at least it was a uh, new revelation. Yeah. Um, so, so, and so if you understand that purpose and then you also believe that the canon has closed, no more scriptures being written then you understand that there is no more no more need for that type of apostolic um validation yeah and i would even say that probably one of the best arguments outside of uh scripture would be we see that happen within a lot of pentecostal communities um apostolic movements you see apostolic fathers, I'm doing air quotes, apostles, air quotes, elevating them to a status of Peter, Paul, John, whatever, and then also taking it and saying, well, no, I've reinterpreted scripture, essentially writing new canon and saying, this is what this verse yeah. really means. Uh, we, we just did an, ep well, I just did an episode on a, re a blog response from Chris Vallotton and it was all of that. It was, well, this is what I say the scripture means. And now he has all these followers. I go, oh, well, Chris is saying that he's an apostolic father. He hears directly from the Lord. I mean, so, so now we see because of that crack in the door of, well, we can perform these miracles and we're, you know, 
doing all these things. Now we have the authority to speak as an apostle uh, on par with uh, scripture. And you're seeing that happen more and more. And then, of course, years later, months later, you see them fall into, you know, some kind of horrible sin or, or whatever it is. And then, you know, they're no longer, uh, you know, part of a ministry. But I, I would say that's a great argument for, for your film, too, even outside of just the biblical verses that would support your theological view on that. So you're saying, yeah, yeah go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, I mean, there's even there's even like a much more because that, that's sort of a, a crazy, you know, like, oh, this guy is claiming to have some way to interpret the scripture that no one's ever seen before. But we see it m even more simply way more often. And that's just people going around saying that they have a word from the Lord, like God spoke this to me. Yeah. And now I'm going to communicate this w when I was engaged. Uh, I had a friend who his mother was very charismatic. And she lived in Rhode Island. I lived in Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, and he invited me to come over to his house after work one day. And when I got there, he wasn't there. And his mom answered the door. She sat me down on the couch and said, last night, the Lord woke me up out of sleep and told me you're not to marry my, my now wife. So she brought me this message from the Lord. And I was very confused because I had no context for like, you know, how to, how to understand these things. And it was, it was a, it was a tough couple of weeks because my wife was like, what's wrong with you? Um, <laughs> but when somebody says that, when somebody says the Lord gave me a word um, and, and here it is, you're literally saying that the authoritative word of God is coming out of my mouth right now. So that makes it equal to scripture. If you're, yeah. if, if you're consistent, if you actually believe what you're saying, then you're, you're saying that you are giving new revelation from God himself. And, uh, I mean, that's just, if you just think about it for five seconds, that is absolute insanity and it's chaos as far as God's word is concerned. Yes. And, and we've seen that chaos take place within these types of churches and things like that. Well, I know this is a subject that we could talk about for hours. Uh, I just wanted to give the listeners a little taste of what's going to be going on in this new film. Um, you want to hang around for a few more minutes and play Fresh Tens so the audience can get to know you a little more about you. Let's do it. What do you think? Yeah, man. All right, let's do it. Yo, can we kick that one more time? Let's go. All right, fresh 10 with Les Lamb Fear. 10 fresh questions for a fresh guest. Here we go. We're going to go rapid fire. And since uh, you're in the film industry, let's start out with favorite actor or director. Oh, oh man. <laughs> um... Uh, oh, geez. Uh, you know, Taika Wat Wat Watiti. Okay. His his movies have been really good lately. Um, I love Quentin Tarantino. Maybe I'll, yeah. I'll I guess I'll say Tarantino. I mean, you know, there's good. a lot of questionable stuff. He's also made some movies that I really hated. I hated I hate both of the Kill Bill movies. Um, uh -huh. but Inglorious Bastards is yeah. one of the. It's just one of the greatest movies ever made. Uh, and then you get classics like Pulp Fiction. So I'll, I'll say Tarantino. There you go. Question number two, when playing Monopoly, what is your favorite properties to own and why? Um, I watched a video on, on somebody doing AI. They did it like a million times or something. And they were showing that uh, the last two, like Park Place and uh, I, I don't really play Monopoly that much, <laughs> but okay. uh, I think it's the, if you're looking at it from the bottom, uh, as the, the bottom row being the starting row. Yeah. It's everything on the left and then everything on the top. Yeah. Those are the ones you want. All right. There you go. Question number three, favorite theologian, dead or alive? Yeah. John Calvin. There you go. That's quick and easy. Number four, what movie can you watch just over and over and over again and not get tired of it? Wait, 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 wait. Let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go okay. back. Let me change my answer. Uh, John Calvin's great, but I forgot about Rick Warren. <laughs> well, he did. I mean, he's basically the new Christ, right? I mean, he's trained so many pastors and everyone relies yep. on him. <laughs> yeah, he's the greatest. Okay. Hands so Calvin, out. Calvin slash Warren. All right. That's official answer. Number yeah. four, what, what movie can you watch over and over and over again? Not get tired of it. Uh, oh, brother, where art thou? Ooh, that's good. Number five, what three albums are you taking with you on the deserted Island? Oh, geez. See, this is embarrassing. Um, I, I like Panic at the Disco way more than I should. Uh, um, <laughs> um, 
man, I might take a Bieber album with me. This is very embarrassing. Okay. Uh, That's why we do these. Well, and, and then there's like my actual, so like Our Lady Peace, 90s stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let, I'll okay. say. We'll go with those I'll three. I'll say, oh, 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 that, that, that Panic at the Disco album with the, with, uh, oh, Pretty Odd, I think it's called. Mm-hmm. And then I'll do uh, Spiritual Machines by Our Lady Peace. And then. Oh, he's doing specific. Uh, Incubus uh morning view you are a 90s guy i love it all right number six what is one book besides the bible that everyone should read uh the institutes calvin's institutes love it number seven what is one thing people assume about you that may not be true that i'm an alcoholic (laughs) 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 well we'll see on question 10 if that's true or not question number eight what is the most difficult aspect of making a film um i think releasing it honestly okay so for me i'll just give a quick uh i get i'm very I'm, i'm i'm okay at raising money i'm okay at getting interviews i'm okay at editing i can do all the work but uh my problem so far historically has been that i'm so exhausted uh, cause it's a one man show deal. So exhausted by the end of the, the process that I, I just put no energy into releasing it. And I'm just like, eh, if you want to mm. watch this, whatever, watch it. I don't care. <laughs> That's interesting. I would have thought you might've said something like funding or something like that, but yeah, releasing it. Okay. That's good. All right. This is a yes or no question. Number nine was the JFK assassination, a CIA operation? Yes or no. Uh, Three years ago, I would have said no. Now, almost definitely. (laughs) Okay, and the last question on the Fresh 10. You're at a friend's house. He offers you an IPA, an island lager, or a stout. Which one are you choosing? Stout, baby. All right. That's been Fresh 10 with Les Lamp here. Let's go. Well, Les, we've enjoyed having you on. Why don't you throw out social media where people can find you? Uh, tell us again where we can fund the film and where they can see it when it's released. Give it to them. Okay. Uh, I, well, I have the Reform Pub. If you're a Reform person and you like to talk about theology and stuff, uh, there's a Facebook group. Um, I'm Les Lanfear on Twitter. I have a website, leslanfear.com, calvinistmovie.com, spiritandtruthmovie.com. You can see all my movies on Vimeo. You can buy DVDs and stuff. Just just Google it. Um, and right now, most important part, Kickstarter. Uh, head over to Kickstarter. Type in cessationist. Uh, Kickstarter will not help you find this movie. They hate Christian movies, and this thing is so buried. You have to type in the name cessationist. Even though it's a successful Kickstarter, and they're going to make money from it, they will not give you – like, they won't put oh. this on anywhere where anybody can ever see it. Um. So, uh, yeah, head over there, watch the trailer. There's a little uh, pitch video. You can watch all that and see what we're offering. And uh, please help help fund it so we can make it the best movie that it could possibly be. I love it. Les, we'll make sure we link up to it, too, when we push it out on all our social media. Guys, make sure you go support them. Check them out has a just just a catalog of great films under his belt and and they're all good so i know this one's going to be great as well and as always guys we thank you for listening sharing with a friend and uh visiting dmwpodcast.com where you can go to the merch store pick up stuff like uh this shirt here you know wine them dine them romans nine them uh supports the show helps us uh bring you content like this and bring glory to god les thank you so much for taking time with us today uh we appreciate it you have any final words before we're out of here Oh, man, thank you so much. This was a blast. All right, guys, as always, thanks for listening and God bless. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Dead Men Walking Podcast for full video podcast episodes and clips or email us at deadmenwalkingpodcast at gmail.com.